Okay, please, uh, if you respect what I do here, uh, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, which is important. That's how I get feedback. That's how I know that you guys uh, respect what I do and what I'm doing is helping. So let's take this page. I'm going to post these pages too for you guys. You can actually see how they're put together. So we're going to go to File and Save As. Now, for those of you who don't know, these arrow key is the shift key. It's a good how to get into understanding shortcut keys and how to basically do that kind of thing. So Macintosh use the command key, Windows use the control key. So let's just call this index version, version for V3. Okay, now, very important step here. Okay, we have these five div tags, but we have no rules for the div tags. In fact, we don't have rules for anything. So before we go further here, we're going to go to the window palette and we're going to bring up our CSS styles panel. Now, we don't need all this other stuff here. We're just going to take our CSS palette and, and basically deep dock it, take it out of the dock, this other stuff, bye-bye. We don't need it. We're going to take this over here. Okay. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the first two videos, you definitely want to look at the first two videos. Okay, so we're, we're working in classic mode and we reset classic mode. The only panel we want to see here besides the property palette is the CSS panel. Now, if you go back, remember the uh, Firefox, I'm sorry, in Firefox in a previous video, we went and looked at YouTube. I'm sorry, we went and looked at Yahoo. Okay, not the uh, Keith Oberman being fired news. We went to Yahoo. Inside of Yahoo, I just want to point out a few steps to you. So inside of Yahoo, we have different division tag. So as an example, we're going to call this the branding tag. We're not going to create this website. We're going to create a website that has different sections. Okay, here's site navigation. Here's main content here. Here's uh, Keith Oberman getting fired, the poor guy. So this section here, we're going to call news. News you can use our news bar section. Okay, now very important step. The entire site is wrapped in a div tag called wrapper or container, or it's basically a div tag with an ID. We're going to identify the ID and call it wrapper. Now, some people call it the container tag. You can call it the Al Pacino tag if you want to. That's not going to make much sense. So let's go back to Dreamweaver. So let's think about how we can solve this issue. We need to take all of our content and wrap it inside of a div tag called wrapper. So how do we do that? Okay, we're not going to do this. We're not going to select this. We're going to select the body tag. In order to affect the tag, we need to come down here to the bottom left here. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. The body tag is now selected. The body tag can now be affected. Rule number one to software. In order to affect the tag, you have to select the tag. The tag is now selected. The tag now can be affected. So we're going to come back up here to Layout tab, and the first icon is Insert Div Tag. Insert Div Tag. We're going to insert a Div Tag. The ID we're going to give this is Wrapper. Okay, hit the Return key. So if you come down here to your palette, your Styles palette, I'm sorry, your ID, I'm sorry, your HTML tag palette, you'll see that this is the Wrapper ID tag. This is the body tag. So if you look at your code for a second, you will see that wrapper starts here, wrapper ends here. So wrapper wraps the entire site. Wrapper wraps branding, site net, main content, news bar, footer, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the wrapper div tag ID called wrapper. It's still just a div tag, okay? Now, very important step here. We're going to create what's called CSS style. CSS style is going to stylize the page. The CSS style is what formats the page. So as an example, I'm going to go back to Firefox for a second. This is what the Yahoo page looks like with CSS styles applied. Under the view menu, I'm working in Firefox right now. This is what the page looks like with no CSS styles. So basically, this is just content on the page with no formatting. So CSS formats the page, formats the page. So if I turn the CSS styles back on, then my page looks nice. 
Okay, so let's go back to Dreamweaver. So in this particular case, our page has no format. Our page has no rules. More specifically, we're going to set some basic CSS rules. We're going to create rules for our tags. That's what the CSS palette does. So how do we do this? Well, in order to affect a tag, we need to select a tag. So we're going to come here to body. We're going to select the body tag. In order to affect the body tag, we select the body tag. You're going to hear me say this a lot in the course of this video series. Select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. I select the tag I want to affect. I come up here to my CSS property palette. And what does this say? This says new CSS rule. Okay. Incidentally, guys, if you're not watching this in full screen, I highly suggest you switch to full screen. This video is captured in 1080p high definition. So you can benefit from watching this in full screen mode. You can see better. Okay, so I'm going to select the tag, select the tag, and make a rule. New CSS rule. I'm going to click. That creates this dot block box. Okay, what I want to do here, these are my choices of selectors. I have class tags, which we'll talk to in a later video, ID tags, which is our wrapper tag, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the tag for the entire site is the body tag. So I select the tag, and it shows me body because that's the tag I selected. So as an example, if I click here, this is all the available tags that I can use in my web design. Here I have my age tags. And up here is my body tag. And here's a div tag, et cetera, et cetera. There's 92 HTML4 and HTML4. There's 92 different HTML tags. With the addition of HTML5, there's well over 100 HTML tags. So you don't have to fret that you have to know every single tag. You don't. Okay, so we're just going to build a nice site with a handful of tags. So we're going to create a rule. We're going to create a rule for the body tag. How do I get there? Select the tag, make a rule. Either go to body tag, or go to tag, or go to compound. Compound just stands for combination. It's a combination of more than one tag. So we're going to either go to compound or body, or compound or tag. Either one works. Okay. Now, we hit OK. What's the name of this dialog box? Very important step here. CSS rule definition for body. It doesn't say H1, it doesn't say paragraph, because that's not what we selected. In order to affect the tag, we need to select the tag. We selected the body tag. So we're going to pick the font family. Now, notice that it says family. What that means is if the person, we're going to pick this font family. So what this means, if the person doesn't have this font on their computer, on their computer, not your computer, their computer that you're viewing it from, if they don't have this typeface, it'll default to this typeface. If they don't have that typeface, it'll default to a sans serif typeface, which means without serif, without the little hook letters, just block straight letters. So we're going to change the size of this in pixels. There's 72 pixels to an inch, if you want to take a note on that. 72 pixels equals one inch. Therefore, half an inch is 36, and half of that is 18. So you should work in pixels. For you desktop publishing people, who use Quirk Express or InDesign or Illustrator, that's those are points. The web understands pixels. We're going to type in 14, in fact, 14.5 pixels and at the apply option. Now, with that did, that changed the base font, which is my body tag, to 14.5 pixels. Now, notice that I don't have to set the color because it defaults to black. I don't have to do anything else. I'm just going to set the default font and my default size. Actually, let's make this a little bit bigger. Let's make this 16 pixels and hit the apply option. So that's my base font for the entire site. Make a change, save a change. So basically, come over here, scroll this down, and I create the body tag rule, the rule for the site. So as an example here, I'm going to pull this up a little bit. Okay, 
This is what I did to that particular tag. I defined the body tag rule to follow these preferences. Arial, 15 pixels, 16 pixels. Now, if I want to make a change to that, I can do that from right here, or I can hit the pencil icon, or I can double click. Now, what that did, that wrote the code for me. So if you go to your code here, you'll see there's the body tag CSS rule for the site. Back in the day, we had to write this from scratch. You don't have to write this from scratch. Dreamweaver does it for you. Incidentally, for those of you that watch other YouTube videos that are all totally wrong because they tell you to make an external style sheet, you don't want to make an external style sheet for a design page that you're creating from scratch because you want to have different versions. And if it's tied to the external style sheet, that's bad technique because you can't have different versions. So I highly suggest if you want to learn this stuff the right way, to stay away from most of the other Dreamweaver tutorials and books and blogs, because they're just going to confuse the hell out of you. Okay, so let's continue. So I have a body tag rule. Okay, so now let's set the rule for the wrapper tag, for the wrapper tag. So we're going to come down here to the tag, select the tag, make a rule. Select the tags, so we're going to come to wrapper. Understand something. So that the wrapper is different than selecting body, which is different than selecting use bar. I just want to select the wrapper tag. So select the tag and make a rule, new CSS rule. Now, there's nothing to do here. Dreamweaver is smart enough to know because you picked an ID tag, it knows that it's an ID tag. Notice it has the pound symbol here. Now, important step, we did not call it pound symbol wrapper. We simply called it wrapper, but because we gave the div tag an ID of wrapper, Dreamweaver knows to put the pound symbol there. So it's pound symbol wrapper that it did by default. There's nothing to select here. It's already selected as an ID. And I hit OK. Now, I'm not going to set the wrapper for the wrapper, I'm not going to set the font and the size because that's what the body tag did for us. But I am going to go to the category. Here's my different CSS rule definition for wrapper. Here's my different categories. We're going to go to the category called box because each rule has an imaginary box around it. Each tag has an imaginary box around it. So we're going to make this box, this wrapper box, be 900 pixels. Now, where am I getting 900 pixels from? Well, that just happens to fit inside of a 13-inch monitor. You can make this whatever size you want. We're going to the tab key. Make this 650 pixels. Okay. Now, if I hit the apply option, you'll see that my box is now X amount wide and X amount high because that's what I told it to do. Okay. So let's put this in the center of our page. In the center of our page, we can do that by going to margin space. Now. Important step here. Padding space is the space inside of the box. Margin space is the space outside of the box. So we're going to deselect Sanford All and we're going to align this to the right, right alignment automatically. We're going to pick Auto. Left alignment automatically. We're going to pick Auto. What that's going to do for us, guys, this is going to automatically put it in the center of our browser window. So it's 900 pixels wide in the center of our browser window. Okay. Now, based on these choices, these choices, we're going to go to border and we're going to set the border style, style, solid, solid, two pixels. We're going to make this two pixels of solid border. Now it defaults to the body copy color, which in this particular case is black. So if I hit the apply option, it now defaults to a wrapper two pixels solid black. Now, of course, we can make it any color we want to. We're just gonna keep this simple. Hit OK. Make a change, save a change. So this dimension of 900 by 600 is our wrapper div tag dimensions. It's 900 by 650. It's 650 pixels high, 900 pixels wide. Okay, so now we can start stylizing the rest of the div tags, and we'll do that in our next lesson.